Good morning, everybody. I'm very honored to give my presentations today. And my talk will be about fast algorithms for approximate common divisors. And it breaks a fully homomorphic encryption challenge over the integers. And this is a joint work by my supervisor, Feng Yan, and myself. So here is the, my plan of presentation. I'm going to start with our brief motivation in the first place, and then I'm going to introduce the problem and explain our approach and introduce our result. And also, we find that our algorithm is also useful in a, uh, in a number of other applications in cryptanalysis. So I will introduce the other applications in, for example, in noisy factoring and low exponent RSA programs. <coughs> And finally, I'm to give a brief conclusion of my talk. So fully homomorphic encryption sch schemes are more and more popular. And it's a very, uh, the f uh, there are a lot of new schemes proposed each year. And it's interesting because it allows to manipulate encrypted data. There are more and more fully homomorphic encryption schemes proposed each year but very few come with concrete parameters. And actually, I marked in, yeah. I marked in green, but you don't see it's in green. In green, the, uh, the schemes comes with parameters, but this is a very un incomplete list of all the schemes. And these schemes can be based on different hard problems. For example, there are problems based on ideal lattices, and it can be based on approximate GCD problems and other things as well. And a very natural question comes is, how secure are these systems? In our work, we focus our study on the schemes proposed by uh, Von Dijk and L, A, Coron and L, the, the schemes that are based on approximate GCD problems introduced by Hogram, uh, Hogram Graham in 2011. In fact, this scheme uses this problem and it proposed very unusual parameters. It proposed parameters very, with very huge numbers. Therefore, it is not clear what is the best attack. In our work, we proposed an algorithm with a time memory trade-off for algebraic exhaustive search that gives an improved attack on the fully homomorphic encryption scheme proposed by CMMT11. And more, more to that, we also give several other applications using our algorithm to, to the realm of uh, cryptanalysis. For example, it can be applied to some cases of RSA and factoring. Actually, this similar uh, time and memory trade-offs trick is already appear, has already appeared in Strassen factoring algorithm, but we show new uses, new uses of that. So uh, let me explain the approximate common divisor problem, and then I will go to explain our approach and try to illustrate our result. The problem of approximate common divisor problem is that uh, the secret is the big prime P and we are given the xi's, which are near multiples of p. That means that we are given xi's that are multiples of p, but plus some very minor noise. And the question is, if we are given these xi's, how to recover the secret prime factor p? Now, if there were no noise, and then, and then the problem would be quite easy. That means if we are given some multiples of p, and we want to recover, uh, recover the number, the, the factor p, and what we do is just we calculate the greatest common divisor of x0 and x1. And this operation is very easy. And, and uh, it's uh, just five, or five times of multiplication. It's just very, uh, very quick. But now we have a little bit inter a uh, little bit um, noise on the sec on the uh, xi's, and then they are not exact multiples of p; they are approximate multiples of p. And in this case, the problem becomes extremely hard. Um, how to find extreme, uh, How to recover the prime factor p 
once we are given the exercise, a very direct method is to do it in, by enumeration. That means we enumerate for all possible noise. And for example, we enumerate, uh, we let I enumerate all the noises and calculate the GCD of X0 and X1 minus I. Actually, X1 minus I, for uh, all those choices, only one of them will give the exact multiples of P. And for that one case, the GCD of this, uh, of this scheme, uh, of these two numbers will return P. But for all the other values of I, the GCD will return one. Basing on this observation, the, we already give our first trick, that is, we can change we can trade the uh, GCD operation for multiplication operation, which is cheaper. That means we can first calculate the product, first calculate the product, and then do a final one, uh, do one final GCD operation. And that means we, instead of doing a lot of GCD operations, we do a lot, um, two powers row multiplications, which already gives five times faster than GCD. And the most important in our algorithm is that we had, uh, we had very big improvement in calculating this product. So in this product, uh, we really try to enumerate the noise S uh, represented by the uh, set S. So uh, in enumerating the set S, we really enumerate 0 and 1 for each bit, each digit in this bit string. And actually, S, the set S is quite structured. It means that actually we can decompose the set S by the direct sum of two other sets, U and V. For the set U, we enumerate 0 and 1 for each bit in the lower end of the lower end of the digit um, lower end. And for V, we enumerate 0 and 1 for each digit in the higher end. As a result, every element in S can be expressed by a certain element in U and another certain element in V. So we say that S can be expressed by the direct sum of U and V. And with this property, we can develop a time memory trade-off. First, let's look at, this is the naive, uh, product, naive scheme for doing the product. So we just uh, do the product one by one, and the complexity will be the number of, the, will be the size of set S, which is two to the row, two powers row. But now, we can rewrite S, the number, uh, the loop of S by uh, the loop of U and V because S is the sum. Mm, we can express S as the sum of U and V, so we can rewrite it in this way. And look at uh, this inner loop. Actually, UI is not changed in this inner loop. So actually, we can pack this inner loop by a uh, product of polynomials, pro product of factors like this. And we calculate this pro polynomial as the product of these factors. And then we evaluate this polynomial on the points ui, which gives exactly the same result as before. But this time, uh, this product can be calculated in time square root of the uh, two to the row, I mean, two to the row over two. And in fact, because this polynomial is independent of ui, we can exchange this procedure, uh, we can put it out of the loop, so it looks like something like that. We first, this is our final algorithm. We first calculate the polynomial, which is of degree two, two, two powers row over two, and then we evaluate this polynomial on two powers row over two points. In conclusion, in fact, our schemes requires to do two things. First, we construct such polynomials in time two to the uh, row over two, and then we are able to construct, uh, evaluate. There are already classical algorithms for evaluate this polynomial on 
2 over rho, uh, 2 powers rho over 2 points. I will explain these two, two parts. The first par part is that we are able to construct polynomial using product tree, and this will cost time 2 to the s, uh, 2 powers s time complexity. And then we are also able to evaluate a polynomial of degree less than 2 power s on uh, two, pon uh, 2 power s points in time to power uh, quasi-linear of 2 power s. And how do we do that? Mm. First step is we have to construct a product tree of x minus ai with ai being the points we want to evaluate. And this will cost quasi-linear of 2 power s. And the second step is that we calculate the, uh, we cal cal evaluate the number, uh, the value of f a i. And in fact, since uh, actually f a i is just f x modular x minus a i, so our evaluation is actually just the calculation of mo uh, modular. And uh, but we do we do it in a clever way using the previous product tree. So it can be done in quasi-linear of 2 power s. Let me first introduce how we, do, how we construct the product tree. We are given a number of, we are given 2 powers s number uh, of small linear factors, and we um, group them by pairs. So we calculate the product of each pairs and for the leaf level, there will be two power s minus one pairs, and, and then we group them by two by two again, and calculate that pair, calculate the product of each pairs again, and group two by two, and each time at each level, there will be uh, half of the polynomials than the previous level, but the degree of the polynomial is going to be twice as, uh, twice as large as the previous level, level. Therefore, the total complexity is almost the same for each level. And uh, finally, we reach the top with uh, the, there are s levels, and the total complexity will be quasi-linear in 2 power s. And then I show how to do the evaluation uh, with a polynomial of degree at most 2, pow two power s on um, 2 power s points in time to a uh, quasi-linear of 2 power s. So the first step is to construct a polynomial tree with x minus ai, uh, ai being the points to be evaluated. This, we already show, can be done in quasi-linear of 2 power s. And the second step is to evaluate, evaluate f ai. And this is the product tree that we constructed in the first step. So when we evaluate this, we're actually calculating the modular. And this modular cal calculation, we, don't, we do it in a top-down manner. That means at first we have fx, which is of degree 2 to the s, 2 power s. Then we calculate the modular uh, of fx the module, uh, fx modular, uh, this polynomial, which is the second level, which is in the second level of the product tree, and this polynomial as well. And since the second level has degree, uh, the polynomial has degree two powers s minus one, uh, that means that the result, f, this thing has uh, half the degree as fx. But each time when we, when we calculate the modulus, we have twice as many um, module, twice as many polynomials to calculate. Therefore, uh, again, in each level, our calculation, the time cost for our calculation is almost the same again. And when we go down to the leaf that gives us the, uh, gives us the evaluation for all FAI, and the total complexity is again quasi-linear into, into power s. The, this is a time, uh, 
time space, time memory exchange because for, cons for uh, store the product of the tree, it costs two power s. So that just uh, so this finishes the introduction of the algorithm itself, and here is the result. So in the original schemes proposed by C M and T, and they proposed four challenges: toy, small, medium, and large, uh, with different security levels, claimed security levels, uh, two to the 42, two to the 52, two to the 62, two to the 72 two operations. And we uh, implemented our algorithms, we launched our implementations, and we get our new security, estimate, uh, security level shown in red. And actually, uh, due to the limitation of our machines, we can only settle for the suboptimal parameters. And some additional implementation tricks can be found in the paper, which is also very interesting. We also gave an estimation of the security level um, for best performance of our algorithm, supposing that we, can, we have access to more memory. Uh, so suppose if we have memory of two, 240 gigabytes, then the challenge of the medium challenge can be cracked in uh, 76 CPU days. And for example, if we have 25 trillion bits of memory, and then the largest challenge can be cracked in nine CPU years. And you can see there is a big lap between the claim, estimation, claim security and the new security level. And actually, uh, there are also other attacks proposed by Korn Hinger. Uh, Hinger. Uh, their, their attack is based on lattices. And however, according to our, to our estimation, there are uh, attacks actually runs not very efficiently. It's even slower than uh, uh, enumer enumeration, uh, naive enumeration. Therefore, it's not very practical. And now, actually, this time space uh, exchange, uh, time memory trade-off trick is very useful even in other realms of cryptanalysis. And here, I will show four examples and. Uh, on noisy factoring and on low exponent RSA schemes. And uh, in general, in fact, as long as the set S to be enumerated can be represented by the direct sum of some equal sized sets U and V, that means if S, the element of S can be written as the sum of some elements in U and some elements in V, then there's possibility to perform our uh, time memory trade-off to really lower down the cost of enumeration to the square root of the uh, square root of the original naive enumeration by first constructing a polynomial and then evaluate it on the second on the second set and especially in fact s doesn't have to be just consecutive numbers as in the previous case and therefore, it finds numerous uh, applications in other situations. For example, here is an example where S doesn't to be consecutive numbers. For example, consider that we have a number N, with, uh, which is a product of two prime factors, P and Q. And after some, for example, side channel attack, P is known except for K bits. And in this case, uh, we can enumerate 0 and 1 for each unknown bit of, the P, of P. But in fact, there is a structure to this enumeration so that we can divide the set of enumeration into, uh, decompose it into the direct sum of two sets. In the first set, we enumerate, uh, half of, we enumerate 0 and 1 for half of the unknown bits. And for the second one, we enumerate uh, 0 and 1 for the remaining unknown bits. And therefore, uh, it is decomposed into the direct sum of um, two sets. And then we can evaluate, create, uh, create a polynomial, evaluate it on all uh, x, i. And finally, the complexity is 2 powers k over 2, which is the square root of the naive, um, naive enumeration. And 
actually compared to Coppersmith method, no methods do not have to be consecutive. In Coppersmith method, uh, the, they can have an unknown bits, but they, these unknown bits really have to be very uh, together. And there is a very similar example. For example, uh, now k, k, uh, n equals to the product of p and q. And after, say, a side channel attack, we have a p prime, which differs from p by k bits. But this time, we don't know which k bit, which positions are, um, which positions are, shift, are flipped. So in this case, again, it is possible to decompose the enumeration uh, space into the direct sum of some other uh, some two sets. For example, we can select, uh, we can cut the p prime split it into two halves, and for one set, we select um, k over two among n over two bits, and this gives a selection, total amount of selection is uh, n over two choose k over two numbers. And the other set, uh, we does the same. And using the time memory trade-off trick, we can do does this in complexity of square root of n choose k, which is almost the square root of the uh, naive enumeration scheme. And another application to RSA's uh, Chinese remainder theorem sig signature scheme. There is an RSA Chinese remainder signature scheme saying that if we are, if we know a message and then somehow we get a 40 RSA signature, uh, signature S by, for example, interfering with the, uh, with the signature, with this, uh, interfering with the signature procedure, we get a 40 signature S and then we can totally re recover the key by calculating GCD of this formula. Now, uh, in the original setting, we are really required to know the, uh, the entire, uh, we are complete message of, uh, complete knowledge of M. But now, actually, with our uh, time memory trade-off, we are not, we can apply to the case where M has k noisy bits. Uh, for example, this could be the case where M is full of padding bits. And in this case, uh, we can do enumeration square root at the, cost, uh, at the cost of square root of the naive enumeration by applying the uh, decomposition into two, uh, into two direct sum sets and other applications to message recovery attacks too. Um, this, ha this happens when, uh, when, when we have, uh, after a decryption of out of fourth attack, M is known except for k bits. And as before, we decompose and we evaluate, and this um, time memory trade-off gives a very uh, obvious speed up. And to conclude, we, we can always square the running time for algebraic exhaustive search, which had already uh, had a faster, atta find a faster attack on the, some uh, fully homomorphic encryption scheme. And it also shows other applications to cryptanalysis, like noisy, fo noisy factoring and a low exponent RSA. And we can ask other questions as well. For example, if, is it mm, the square root, is this really the best running time possible f to calculate the product of consecutive numbers. Since consecutive no numbers, there is a, seems to be a structure in it. Is there possible to do better than square root? And then is there are more efficient attacks on approximate GCD. We saw other attacks like uh, Korn and Henninger um, based on lattices, but is there are more efficient and other attacks. And can we use more XIs to speed up, the, to speed up this attack what we use is only x0 and x1, and there's a possible possibility to use x more xi's to achieve a better attack. And more uh, in the aspect of analysis of uh, fully homomorphic encryption schemes, now there are a lot of works on fully homomorphic encryption schemes, but very few on the attacks. However, if we really want to know how practical and secure is fully homomorphic encryption scheme, we need more works uh, attacks and concrete parameters. And that's all, and thank you very much. I'm waiting for your questions.
so we have time for one question. No questions, so let's thank the speaker again.